Hey guys, how you doing? So welcome to a Movi Chip video. This is going to be the first in two or three videos about engine tuning with your mass airflow sensor. So first of all, what is a mass airflow sensor? It's a sensor that is mounted in the intake piping of your engine, so the usually the first sensor after the air filter. It sends a signal to your engine's ECU, usually a 0 to 5 volt sense, uh, signal. It uses two wires, as you can see in the bottom left picture here. You can see the two wires running along the bottom. I think the top one then is just something to divert the air. Two sensor wires usually, and uh, generally the MAF sensors are very tough and reliable. Don't usually go wrong and they because they're so simple. Um, so what does a mass airflow sensor do? It, As the name suggests, it measures the mass of air entering the engine, depending on what the signal is. It represents uh, a mass of air that's going in the engine and from that information the ECU uh, will inject a specific amount of fuel and put a specific amount of ignition timing into the engine. So what is mass airflow sensor tuning? Well, basically we manipulate the signal that's created by the sensor before it goes into the ECU. So the, a device that tunes the mass sensor signal, the mass airflow sensor signal, will connect to the sensor itself. It will receive a voltage from there, for example, two volts, and it will manipulate it according to what the user has specified and then send a, a different voltage to the uh, car, to the engine's uh, ECU. So why would you want to tune the mass airflow sensor signal? Many different reasons. Um, I'll just go through some here. Um, so you might you might just want to try different air fuel ratios for more power. Maybe the air fuel ratios that the car manufacturer has chosen from the factory uh, were not uh, ideal. Maybe they, for example, at wide open throttle, maybe they were super conservative with the air fuel ratios that they were running. So there was no ignition timing problems if the fuel was very old, if the fuel was very bad quality. So to do that, they maybe run a very rich AFR, which is not good for power. So you can experiment with uh, different air fuel ratios uh, to see if you can get more power from the engine. Another reason is that you need to replace the mass airflow sensor that was on the car from the factory. Maybe it's just old, it's bro simply broken for whatever reason. But the, the, to buy the same sensor that's on the on the engine it would be very expensive maybe it's uh, maybe they don't may, maybe not many cars use that sensor uh, maybe the sensor is old for whatever reason it could be very expensive like three four five hundred pounds five hundred euro five hundred dollars whatever the case may be but if you have the ability to uh, manipulate that mass airflow sensor you can potentially use the uh, signal from any mass airflow sensor on the market so you can choose one that is much cheaper than the air fuel ratio that you've got in your car at the moment for example you know the the bosch stuff stuff that's on vw audi say at skoda usually all the same and um, because there's so much demand they make so many of them maybe there's more than one manufacturer that makes a sensor so the prices will be you know you know maybe the cheapest mass sensors you can buy are for volkswagen audi group for example so basically you can save money by just choosing to use a, a cheaper, it gives you the ability to use a different, a cheaper mass airflow signal if you can manipulate the signal from it. Maybe you fitted an aftermarket intake and now the air going over the, the sensor is different. Maybe it's the, the sensor is on a bend whereas before it was on a piece of straight pipe. Maybe it was a rubber hose before that caused a lot of turbulence to go over the uh, sensor and now it's in an aluminium pipe, there's less, less turbulence in the, um, in the intake. Uh, maybe the intake has, uses a different diameter, probably not, but it's possible. Um, you know, whatever, whatever reason, for some reason the intake has changed the behaviour of the uh, uh, MAF uh, sensor signal, so being able to change that um, allows you to make the engine run uh, at its optimum maybe uh, wear and tear on the engine so if your engine has got a uh, big mileage on it maybe the sensors are not as accurate as they once were maybe they're dirty maybe they're just worn out 
maybe parts of the engine are not exactly what they were maybe you've got uh, oil deposits on the intake valves and uh, the engine is not flowing the air as much air as it was before maybe catalytic is blocked basically anything that can just age on an engine makes it could make it not run at its optimum so if you are a bit able to manipulate the mass airflow sensor signal you can make sure that the air fuel ratios are at their optimum for fuel economy and for um, uh, acceleration wide open throttle uh, maybe the original mass airflow sensor on the, the car is restrictive on the newer cars very unlikely on the older cars possibly so it gives you the again it's very much same sort of example as replacing the uh, the sensor with a different model if your original mass sense uh, mass airflow sensor is restrictive if you have a device which can alter the signal of the MAF sensor, it gives you the opportunity to fit a bigger MAF sensor to the car. That is not so restrictive. And then I just put here sports catalyst, but basically anything that alters the volumetric efficiency of the engine. Being able to adjust the mass airflow sensor signal will help you get the AFRs, the air fuel ratios where they are for where you want them for best power. So pluses and minuses of tuning with a mass airflow sensor uh, signal. As with engine tuning, there's always a compromise between the cost of the product, the complexity of the product, and the features that that product has. So mass airflow sensor signal tuning is no different to any of that. It has its pluses and it has its minuses. So the pluses of, using, of tuning the mass airflow sensor signal, it's a very easy process because you're only intercepting one wire. Um, if your car's got two MAF sensors, then it's going to be two wires, but most cars have one. So by just intercepting the signal from one wire, you can change the the fueling of the car quite radically. Depends on the car. Some some cars you can put different changes in, more cha bigger changes in than others. Like the older cars, maybe you can adjust the, the signal by, you know, 30 40% maybe. But with the newer cars, maybe they've got... You know, more sensors, they've got better control of the engine, so maybe you, you're, you're restricted, say, I don't know, 10, 15%, maybe, I'm not exactly sure, but less than older cars for sure. So in short, the pluses are, it's very powerful, uh, it's easy to install, and you can make big changes to the fuel. The negatives of mass airflow sensor tuning, well, fuel link isn't changed in isolation. When you alter the, the mass sensor signal, you're not only changing the fuel in. You'll also be changing the ignition timing. So to use the an example using the original the original MAF sensor that was on the car, if you increase the voltage, if you increase the signal from that MAF sensor, you're going to be retarding the ignition, the ignition timing. And if you decrease the signal coming from the MAF sensor, you're going to be advancing the ignition timing. So the amount you change the MAF sensor signal by it's going to be altering the ignition timing. So the more you alter the mass airflow sensor signal, the more you'll be altering the ignition timing. What, how closely connected and what the relationship is between those two things is going to vary from car to car, modification to modification. But it's something to be aware of. Is MAF tuning the right thing for you? Um, well, it's a question that, you know, the user, the end user has to, to answer themselves. A couple of questions that... Uh, you need to ask is why do you want to change the mass sensor signal in the first place if the engine is stock and like you just want to change the AFRs to experiment then you know math tuning is you know very good for that uh, if you're trying to achieve um, you know a different AFRs because you've modified the engine then you know how suitable the math tuning is will, will depend on what modifications that you've made modifications like camshafts and turbos uh, not so suited to uh, MAF tuning as, you know, intakes, um, you know, different exhausts, etc. If you're not sure, uh, you know, what's happening or if it's right for you, you know, speak to your tuner or the guy that's going to install or guy or girl that's going to install the product. Discuss your situation with them, what you want to do, what you want to achieve, uh, and they can, sh you know, point you in the right direction of if it's right for you or not. Products which tune MAF sensor signals. Now, there's basically two types of devices. There's dedicated devices that do that are designed to do nothing else except alter MAF sensor signals. And there's other products that will alter the MAF sensor signal, but they'll also do other things as well. 
So examples of dedicated devices would be something like the Apexi AFC Neo and our Movid Chip AutoMath. The, these products are designed specifically for the job of altering the MAF sensor signal. And then you've got non dedicated devices, which will be most piggyback ECUs, but I know for a fact that the AEM FIC has a table specifically to you know, alter the MAF sensor signal. And then you've got standalone ECUs. I'm not sure what percentage of standalone ECUs will allow you to alter the MAF sensor signal, but I imagine quite a lot of them. Um, but obviously, there's a difference between the, the cost of these products. The dedicated products are cheaper than the uh, non-dedicated products. So why choose a dedicated device? Well, like I said, the price between a dedicated device like the Automath from Movichip or the AFC Neo from Apexi is going to be lower than uh, most good piggyback uh, ECUs. Uh, and the dedicated devices will also be much easier to install than uh, uh, non-dedicated devices they're easier to use because there's less option they have less options they don't do so many things so it's easy to get the grips of them and like I said the price is less so in summary uh, mass sensor tuning is best suited for fine tuning of the engine if you if you've made big changes to the engine like I was saying earlier like turbos bigger turbos supercharged uh, change the camshafts big changes like that basically if you made radically altered the uh, volumetric efficiency of the engine, then uh, a, a device that can only tune the mass airflow sensor signals is, is not ideal. It's more for fine tuning, you know, small changes to the air fuel ratio. So if you want to experiment uh, with different AFRs, or if you want to bring the AFRs back to what they were before because of a modification or because of wear and tear in the engine, etc., etc., etc. Um, so yeah, I just said again, yeah, big modifications, you need a device which can also alter ignition timing independently. I suppose you could use a dedicated device and then a separate device to do ignition timing on its own. It's up to you. Um, you could do that. Um, you know, try one first and then if it's not 100% what you want it to do, then add another product later. Or you could just go from the start with, like, with a piggyback ECU. Again, something to discuss with uh, your tuner and maybe other people on forums and whatever you see what they're doing. As I said, math tuning is very powerful and, it easy, and easy, but it does have limitations. And like I said, if you're not sure, then uh, speak to uh, someone who does basically and uh, discuss with them what you're trying to do, why you're trying to do it, and they can maybe point you in the right direction of which product is uh, right for you. So that's it guys, thank you for watching if you've made it this far, uh, please vote on the video, if you like this video obviously please subscribe to it, and if you want to receive um, you know, news and videos about new products that we're going to be bringing out, you know, uh, updates to uh, products that we have, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, visit our website, the links are in the description. So until next time, take it easy and uh, I'll see you again.